Hello everyone. Welcome to part five in our series documenting our trip to the Baltic Sea in 2018. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, I've put a link to them uh, in the description section below this video window. If you are caught up on all the episodes, then we pick up the action as we pull into the seaport of Tallinn, Estonia. We hope you enjoy it. Campers, it's 7.45 Estonia time, and we're going upstairs to have some breakfast before we uh, head into town. As usual, there was nowhere to sit in the garden cafe. So when there's nowhere to eat inside, you wound up sitting outside, where it's open air and very cold. Okay, we're um, at the buffet, the worst place on the ship ever. There's other places you can eat where they have sit-down dining. It's all included. There's about four other restaurants besides the buffet. The buffet is a nightmare, especially when everyone gets up at the same time. We're about ready to dock in the, uh, about an hour. So everyone's at the buffet. I mean, all 4,000 passengers are milling around here trying to find a place to sit and get more coffee, and it's just a nightmare. I ate half of my breakfast in line while I was waiting for my omelet. After breakfast, it was time to meet up with our crew. This is our normal meeting place. This is the atrium, and hopefully I see 20 people here. I see some people here. 18 of our group met in the atrium to go into Tallinn. Sandy's here! Yay! Yay! The only two missing were Ted and Kathy. We think that this is because Ted was still being interrogated for skipping the muster drill. We were finally able to head ashore a little after 9.30 and needed to be back on the boat no later than 4 o'clock. Each of the Norwegian cruise ships have hulls that are designed by different artists. The hull of the breakaway is designed by renowned artist Peter Max. The walk to Old Town was about a mile and took us about 25 minutes. Along the way, we stopped to get a shot of Vern pretending to graffiti this wall. All right. <laughs> As we approached town, I took note of this smokestack, thinking it might be a helpful landmark later in the day. Tallinn is the capital of Estonia and the largest city in the country. It was actually part of the USSR for many years with a brief occupation by the Nazis during World War II, but it became its own republic in 1991. The modern city is the birthplace of many international companies, including Skype, but the Old Town section of Tallinn is a tourist dream. Tallinn first received its cityhood in 1248, but human settlements there date back 5,000 years. The reason that Tallinn is so popular is because it is one of the best preserved medieval cities in Europe. A day spent walking through the cobblestone streets of the Old Town area and peering into its various shops and restaurants really makes you feel like you've gone back in time to the 14th and 15th centuries. The one thing that sort of took me out of that element from time to time is the fact that they do allow cars in the city. Not many cars, but every car that drove past sort of takes you out of the fantasy that you've traveled back through time. If there's one thing that Tallinn has, it's plenty of souvenir shops. Dane and the ladies were having such a fabulous time stopping at all the shops that I didn't think we'd have enough time to actually see the whole city. Yeah. 
and I strolled along patiently waiting for the girls, and at one point he stopped for a moment to unzip his pants and turn them into shorts. I swear this guy is just like James Bond. She's not a strolling minstrel, she's just standing there. We passed by our first street musician playing a beautiful version of Christina Perry's A Thousand Years. Who's this young gentleman sitting in my favorite spot? Hello, Dana. Yeah, put a cup out or so maybe you'll get some tips. No, a cup. Yeah, and just close your eyes. Shake your hand a little. Yeah, there you go. That's very convincingly. As we finished in the lower town, where the merchants, craftsmen, churches, and monasteries were located, we headed up into the upper portion of the city, which is home to the castle and a couple of cathedrals. On our way up, we passed yet another violinist playing beautiful music for us to enjoy. As I looked up, I noticed that Margaret, of all people, was leading the way and was quite a ways ahead of us. Margaret, for God's sake, slow down. Hey, leave her alone. She's got a case At the top, we ran into Darren and Kelly, who had just gotten back from the Overlook and told us that it was something that couldn't be missed. Look at that big walk up to the Overlook. Is that, is that yeah, great? Yeah, just around the corner. Good. Did yeah. you see the big round building? The big round building, the one that Virginia was talking about. There's a big building here that's hugely round. I told Darren that we were supposed to go see the round building, whatever that meant, so he tried to look it up on his phone. Well, Anyway, they pointed us toward the Overlook and we continued on that way. We eventually arrived at the Overlook, but there were so many people there checking out the view that you had to stand in line behind people to get your turn at the front. The wait was certainly worth it. From up here, you get a fantastic view of the old city and the modern city in the distance. You could even see our ship from up here. So now it was almost noon and we had been walking around in a fairly good heat for nearly two and a half hours. Well, on our way back from the Overlook, we passed by a pub with outdoor seating. And because I was so hot from all the hill walking and carrying the tripod and the backpack, I thought that a cold beer sounded pretty good. So I ordered a beer, but then remembered that I still needed to find the famous round building, whatever that was. So I grabbed the camera, and as I passed by the Alexander Nevsky Russian Orthodox Cathedral, I saw a round structure sticking up in the background. So I made a beeline toward that tower to get a picture, only to find out that this was just one of the turrets on the castle. As I turned around and headed back to the pub, I finally saw the round building. This is Keek into Cook, which stands for Peek into the Kitchen, because when it was built in 1483, it was so tall that you could actually see into people's kitchens in the lower town. Since World War II, it has been a museum. Now that I finally found the round tower that I'd been searching for, I headed back to the pub to find that beer that I had ordered. So after a hard day of filming, you come back for your just reward. Local beer. 
Nice and cold. At about 12.30, we left the pub to go in search of our special lunch at a place called Old Ahanza, which is a restaurant that serves food in the medieval style of the 15th century. It sounded like it would be quite a unique experience, but it was somewhere down in the lower city and we were going to need some time to find it in order to get to our one o'clock reservation. Now that's a sidewalk cafe. As we were headed to the lower town, we passed a place called the Beer House. We were standing outside looking in and a man came out of the building and said, have you been inside? And we said, no. He said, you have to go in and see it. So in we went. Right as we walked in, we found a group of taxidermy animals carrying trays of beer. Okay, we're off to kind of a weird start. In the next room was a pirate ship with a wooden pirate that you could pose with. Then we got into the heart of the pub. This place was nothing but medieval atmosphere. In the back of the house was a small courtyard that made you feel like you were outdoors even though you weren't. And they had these really cool private rooms where you and your group could have a small party. This was such a cool place and if we'd had more time we definitely would have stopped in here for a beer, but we were still looking for our restaurant and had to keep moving. After a few more minutes of walking, we came to the Town Hall building in, you guessed it, Town Hall Square. This square is the heart of the city and has been the main marketplace since the 13th century. Nowadays, it's the location of medieval festivals, open-air concerts, and fairs. The Estonians even argue that this square is the site of the world's first Christmas tree. Other scholars disagree, but there you go. As I was out in the square taking pictures, I had an aha moment. Here was our restaurant, and we still had 10 minutes before our reservation. We got the group together and entered in through the wrong way, but already you can see from the atmosphere what kind of experience we were going to have here. As it turned out, we wound up arriving a few minutes too early, but we were still waiting for Ben and Rochelle who said that they were going to join us for lunch, but with five minutes to go before our reservation, they were nowhere to be found. We unfortunately wound up having to proceed without them. The table will be uh, ready right away on the third floor. I just confirm is, is everything ready there. Because we're a little bit earlier, but not very... No, no, not permanently. So, I... Uh, I told them really, really, we need five minutes more. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. But since we still had a few minutes before our table was ready, I took my camera and took some shots of the outside. Dana wandered up to a small booth where two girls were giving out dates and selling little medieval trinkets. At one o'clock, we were told that they were ready for us and we walked up to the third floor to find our table. Now the cool thing about eating indoors was the authenticity. They didn't have electricity back in the 15th century, so the only light in the entire building came from some of the small windows or the candles placed all over the restaurant. Are you part of which group? With a 14, huh? Yes. All righty, so you can settle down over there. Once we were settled, our waiter Cedric took over and launched into pretty much a show. He was a waiter completely in character from 600 years in the past, treating us in a manner that the rich merchants of the time were. Welcome to the wealthy merchant's house, my friends. Welcome to all the Hansa. My name is Master Cedric Stimlik, and I shall be taking care of your every need and desire this fine day. Food and drink wise. Yeah? <laughs> Everything else works on a separate price list. So, we have already taken the liberty of putting it on the table some of the appetizers, and you today have a marvelous chance of enjoying a feast. Yeah? To eat like the wealthy merchants did about 600 years ago. So tonight will be no uh, ordinary restaurant experience, as much I can promise you. Yeah? And today, 
our feast shall be glorious. But so it could be so, I will introduce what exactly you have on the tables. So, orange tongue jelly over here, together with horseradish cream. Then we have the lovely uh, Castle's raw cheese, which goes excellently with our breads. The only thing that I will warn you about this place is that the menu is also from the 15th century. So you're going to have to be a little bit adventurous in some of the things that you're going to be eating that day. And the spice merchant's berry jam. So you're not going to find any Pop-Tarts on the menu, but you might find bear steak, elk, wild boar, and salmon. For appetizers, there are saffron pickles, olive berries, and fresh melted cheese served on nutty herb bread. Before any of this tasty group can be touched, we must assign ourselves a master of the feast. And the master is the wisest amongst you, also the strongest, the quickest, the cleverest, the wealthiest, and the most fertile man in the company. <laughs> I see fingers being pointed at you. Yes. Will you take off the mantle of becoming a hero? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> then state your name, sir. Master Lee. Master Lee. Well, Master Lee, your very first task of today is to take one of these breads without the plate and break it in half. Luckily, you only have to break the bread. Viva! Viva! Now the second task shall be to take some of this salt and to sprinkle it all over the bread, giving it the last touch of taste. Ah, uh, you might want to use your fingers. But who am I to tell the master? Use your fingers. Use your fingers. Use your fingers. With your fingers. Wanderers. Now, the final test shall be the tasting. Not the salt. <laughs> Although, if that's what throws you. So, you shall take a piece of bread, put it in your mouth, and if you deem it worthy, then and only then, may the feast begin. <laughs> yes! Then, commence! The feast may begin. You can now devour as much food as fits in your bellies, but the main courses, they are still to come. There are a lot of those as well, so let's leave some room in the belly for those. Yeah. Let's start making those bellies happy! Did you get one? Yay! The cool thing about it is that it is all you can eat. If we ever ran out of something, we would simply ask Cedric for another round and he would just bring it. So there's really no going hungry here. So this one consists of uh, love, friendship, and booze. It's the first food. You want to move this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. One over here. To your help, Dilly Dilly. <laughs> That's how they used to say in the old Norse countries. It is my pleasure, make the privilege to bring to the table our main course. Barley with nuts of uh, yep, Crusaders lentils. And here I have the ginger turnips. And the cornerstone of every good German feast, we have the smoked and baked sauerkraut. Oh, yes. And some wild boar and elk meat. I know about elk, I don't know about wild boar. Oh, I do too. And the ever so lovely grilled salmon in hazelnut sauce. So grilled salmon in hazelnut sauce. And grilled salmon in hazelnut sauce. Wow. And as always, if anything runs out, then I will bring more of it. The main thing is to make your bellies as happy as possible. So do enjoy. Because we were a large group, we ordered from one of the three family-style meals where a ton of food was just brought to the table and you would simply help yourself. This wound up costing about $28 a person. I'm not sure what this was again, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> so if you open your mind to try some new things, you will have a fantastic experience like we did. Add in the atmosphere and the fantastic service provided by Master Cedric, and I can tell you this was one of the most memorable things we did on our entire trip. Well 
After about two hours of stuffing our stomachs, we limped out of the candlelit restaurant into the brightness of the Estonian afternoon. Well, that was super cool. I'm so glad we did that. Really good food, amazing freaking atmosphere. Highly recommended. Old Hansa, if you're going to come to Estonia, what a fun place for lunch. How was your lunch? It's fantastic. Yeah. That was really cool. I couldn't so see what did. I was eating, but it tasted good. Yeah, that's true. It was a little darker. Guess what this is? <laughs> yeah. Tasted fun. Oh, How man, awesome was that? That was one of my favorite things cool. that we've done here. It is. It is. Yeah, that was really good. The seasoning and everything all that. And the atmosphere. The, the atmosphere, atmosphere was like insane. Our waiter was fantastic. Yeah, everything. We had about an hour before we needed to be back on the boat, so we weren't necessarily in a rush, but we did need to think about heading back at some time. As we headed sort of out of town, we kind of broke off into many groups. Carl and Vern needed to find a mailbox. Dana went to go shop, which is super scary since we were on a deadline. Remember the train in Berlin? If not, go back and watch day four. But for my sake, I saw this giant wall and wanted to get some shots of it. This wall surrounds the city measuring about two and a half kilometers in circumference. The wall is also about 50 feet high, high enough to keep out any 15th century intruders. I began following the wall with Kelly's mom Nancy, Sandy, Margaret, and Aunt Freddie. We finally got to a dead end and were forced to turn left back up into the city. I turned to look behind me and found that Aunt Freddie was nowhere in sight. So I asked Margaret to stay right there so that she wouldn't get lost, and I ran back to find Aunt Freddie. I eventually found her popping in and out of shops and taking pictures of everything in sight just like I do. We eventually caught back up to Margaret, but now Nancy and Sandy were gone, and with 30 minutes left before we were supposed to be back on the boat, I knew I didn't have time to go find them as well. I wasn't really even sure where I was. Finally, I looked up and saw the smokestack that I had seen on our way into town and knew that we had to pass right under it in order to get back to the ship. So I used that thing as sort of a beacon and kept heading straight toward it until we eventually were able to get out of the old town and back on the familiar path back to the ship. We approached the ship with some 15 minutes to go. Nancy and Sandy eventually showed up, which was a load off my mind, but still no sign of Dana. Vern, Dana, ahead of you guys? Yeah. Okay. Last time we saw her, she cut through this little marketplace alley. We just bypassed it coming back through the gate. But you did not see her in front of you after that? No. Uh oh. She eventually did get back on the ship in time, and the breakaway headed toward our next port. I've benefited by this a couple times now. Dana told me the secret. The little fishies always swim to the front of the boat. And since we're aft, we're on deck 13 aft, you got to go against the fishies if you want to get to my room. As part of Dapple Destinations TV, whenever Dane and I are on a cruise ship, we want to experience as many of the restaurants and onboard activities as we can so people can see what those are like. Well, tonight we decided to try Cagney Steakhouse, and Lee and Elaine said that they wanted to join us. So the four of us met in the Prime Meridian Bar for our late 9-10 table. Dana had the oysters Rockefeller for her appetizer, and I had the baked potato soup and a Caesar salad. I then had the prime rib for my main course. For dessert, Dana had the creme brulee, and I had whatever had chocolate in the ingredients. We finished our fantastic meal at about 11 o'clock. Well, we closed down this dump, didn't we? On the way back to the room, I passed by Bliss, the nightclub, and heard a bunch of noise coming out of it. So I poked my head in there for a minute to see what kind of party they had going on in there. And as I approached my room, I passed through the atrium where they were showing fantastic beasts and where to find them on the giant screen. I took a shower and went to bed at around midnight because tomorrow was going to be another long day. Okay, a great dinner with me and Elaine. Dana went to see if she could find a poker table. And I am going to call it a day. If you have any questions, please enter them in the comment section below. And as always, please like and subscribe to our channel by clicking our little picture here on the side. And we'll see you next time.